and welcome to this year's 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. This is our seventh year, which is pretty exciting. And we're happy to have our Open Simulator Core Developer Spotlight and, uh, a, lot, and a lot of the folks who kind of make Open Simulator happen. Uh, so on um, here with us, I will just kind of put the names and then I'll just say a couple things housekeeping wise so before I had hand it over uh, to them. So uh, we have uh, Robert Adams to my right uh, and then uh, uh, well, actually, I guess yes, to my left, sorry, uh, on the couch with me. And then on the green couch, uh, we have uh, Lear, who's the co-chair with me for the conference, um, uh, Cynthia Kahn, and, uh, and then Rubit Miroff, Krista Lopes, and then Andrew Heloshanks on the opposite blue couch. So uh, just a few housekeeping things first. So you can check the schedule out uh, on conference.opensimulator.org and I will put that in the text chat as well. Uh, and uh, from there you can also uh, see the full schedule, the details of the sessions, and all the speaker bios. And I encourage you, especially for this particular presentation, to go click on the, the um, Presentation details because many of the amazing core developers up here also have links to like their Patreon and other funding uh, kind of personal funding things. So uh, that's helpful if you want them to to still kind of support the the work that they do on an ongoing basis. So certainly check that out. Uh, and uh, the um, and the other thing is too uh, the conference is being live streamed and recorded. Uh, so, uh, while we're here in World, we are also um, on YouTube, uh, and uh, there will be videos that go up after this. Uh, this is the, um, we'll throw the, the URL in afterwards for the, for the video link to the YouTube, but you can obviously share, um, you can chat here in local chat if you have questions during this conversation. Uh, session or during any of the sessions. So uh, if you have questions or just general chat, certainly chat here in local chat. Uh, you can also share photos and tweet and add comments that way as well. We'll probably be quicker to answer questions here in world, of course. Uh, and, um, and then there is the, um, as I said, there's YouTube uh, as, as well. Uh, we also have for kind of ongoing chat throughout the conference. Um, uh, we set up a Discord server this this year too, and I will, um, I will get the, the link to that in here in chat. Uh, there's an OSCC19 chat in there if you want to uh, hang out and chat there throughout. Uh, there are many, we go from 7 a.m. to um, 6 p.m. each day this weekend, and then there's a music session this after um, this evening at the end of that, and there's many social events around there. Uh, I just want to quickly kind of change the slide behind me. Uh, these are our kind of planning team, so if you see these folks around, obviously the dev, if you see them around, thank them uh, immensely. Uh, and then this is our core, our, uh, our dev our planning team for OSCC this year, including myself and uh, Lou Lobo, Cynthia Colon, who is the co-chair, um, who's kind of put together a lot of this content and organized the program for this year. So uh, I will kind of turn it over to her to kind of chat with the, the devs for a bit. Just uh, also for those folks who are crowd funders or help speakers or help support the conference, we will be doing a VIP Q&A with the dev folks uh, in the staff zone at 11.30 to 12.30 today. So that's another chance if you to ask questions if, if you want to. So with that, Lear, I turn over to you to kind of uh, talk with the devs. And thank you everybody for being at OSCC. Thank you, Joyce, and welcome everyone. First, we'd like to get to our topics. We have many new developments this year to talk about, and I'm interested in the new scripting engine. Why engines available as, as an experimental option? Would one of the devs like to talk to this item? Perhaps you, Robert, or or you, Bit. I think you, Bit, is probably the best person to talk. Hello, Hello. everyone. Hello, you, Bit. 
the very good to see everyone here and that the region still didn't crash uh, but it's still hard to say well the new script engine I w we hope that um, well we must mention that is not that new it is it was a donation from um, Melanie and people from um, Avi Nation and people from um, uh, Dream Nation, uh, Greed and Meta 7. So it's not uh, that new. It's new for the, the main OpenSIM uh, core version. And we do hope that it does overcome some of the problems that we couldn't have with extension that we just can't fix because they are part of how it is designed from origin. Um, that's basically it. We have some hope that it will open us uh, a road for improvements in the script language, etc. Okay. It's hey, okay. Thank you. No, that's wonderful. And by the way, to our audience, we will be able to take one or two questions this morning. And then, of course, we'll have a question and answer session at the VIP session. So let's see. What's the next option about the new OSSL functions? Can you talk about that? Oh, I, I don't know. That was more than a week ago. I really don't remember that very well. <laughs> but they oh, are you're so funny. <laughs> Um, well, we had some, I, I think, some mass supporting tools to help to help people to do some uh, uh, some math, <laughs> and um, basically that, not um, very outstanding uh, uh, features really, in the terms of um, uh, script extensions, um, at least that I can remember at the moment. Sorry. Oh, so well, that's all right. I was just yeah. pulling up the uh, I was just pulling up the wiki page. Um, the uh, pretty much all of the new functions uh, for the OSSL um, scripting language, uh, they're flagged with the with a little icon that says new beside them. Um, what I can do is I can drop a link in open chat for the uh, to the wiki page, and people can take a closer look at the wiki to see what uh, what uh, functions have been recently added. Oh, that's wonderful! Thank you. Yeah, of course. Sorry, to, of course we made some change to old ones that were not that good. One I remember is the dynamic te textures that were not uh, producing the same results in Linux and Windows. And, well, all skipping fixes. Okay. Those are great. Okay. Well, what about viewer side object caching? Well, before we go there, uh, the, um, the the new functions. Uh, one of the features of both X Engine and Y Engine is it's very easy to add new functions, and uh, Open Simulator is built to be modular, and so you can just add a module. Uh, so with a little programming, you can easily add a function to the language uh, that would work in that region, and it shows up in the editor and will, you know, is available all functions. I just wanted to mention the fact that. Uh, adding new functions is not that big a programming thing and can be done as kind of a drop-in uh, feature of a region. Thank you. Well, that brings us to the dancing folks behind me. <laughs> uh, what about support for animating mesh objects? Well, we try to, to support the features that we see in viewers for uh, OpenSIM and the, the, this like object viewer catch are such things, such new features that were introduced and we try to support, of course, okay? The object cache is actually not something that new viewers have that for many years already. But for now, we try to, to support it because it should provide some improvement to raising time when we return to origin. Okay? Hey, that's great. You know, and there was a question in the audience, and just for the recording, Frank Ruloff asked if the existing Linden Lab functions will still work. And of course, Yes, the existing functions work, but the OSSL extra functions are available for use in scripts. So now, what about the MRM module that has been removed? What can you tell me about that? 
I think no one was actually using it that much, and it, uh, it had problems of maintenance to, to update some security part of the code that was removed from the new .NET framework. Um, so it would require a lot of work to update, and actually no one is using it. And it also doesn't fit in very well in the model because it is somewhere in between uh, scripting, normal scripting, and a full model uh, creation. So it was there somewhere in the middle, and um, I think it had to go. Okay. Thank you. That's wonderful. So now, what about this bake on mesh support? You know, are we are we planning on catching up to that, or what are your thoughts? I think it is already working. Of course, we we have a problem with your side, and we we still can't say that the region side is is working perfectly because we can't fully test it. But the viewers that do support it, uh, everything seems already working okay. Hey, that's fantastic. So, Krista, we haven't really turned over to uh, what you've been working on, and I know last year you had quite a few thoughts. How does Open Simulator look for you for the future? So, let, first let me look at the past. This past year I have, have not been able to contribute a lot to Open Simulator because life got in the way. Uh, but um, I've been doing lots of other things in real life. Uh, but I am still, as always, you know, open, open scene is still in my heart, and I have, uh, I will be doing a um, release of uh, the Diva distribution very soon because uh, we are planning to do a a new release of Open Sim, um to fix some bugs uh, over the previous release. So I just wait until the new one comes along so that I can, can make a new release of the DV distribution. And uh, as as you always, I am still looking for opportunities to um, to move on on the viewer on a, a different kind of viewer, and uh, that is such a huge amount of work that it, it just needs to have the right context for me to, to actually do it. I had done a lot of work a couple of years ago, but I, I kind of had to stop because uh, I classes started. I didn't have time. Uh, but I, I, you know, it, it's still on the on the back of my mind, and it's it's something. It's a type. It's a type of work. I believe that it's sort of um, intemporal. That uh, it would be nice to have it right now, but uh, it can actually, you know, whenever there's the right time, the right context, it will happen. So it will eventually happen. I think it will happen when I, when I retire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and we want to congratulate you, by the way. I don't know if the community knows, but you are now an IEEE fellow. And for those of you who are unaware oh. of what that means, well, it is a great honor. In computer science, we don't have a Nobel Peace Prize. And all we have are, are recognition by our communities, right? And, of course, the IEEE recognized you for service. And we want to, we want to congratulate you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I want to I want to jump in and sort of just say one thing too, right? Um, the, you you mentioned uh, the update to to the Div, Diva uh, uh, Wi-Fi. We we would we also uh, Diva stepped up and kind of really helped us to sort of sort the grid and getting Wi-Fi up to speed here as well, and made some updates for us. So thank you for that as well. So that way we could uh, make sure that everything kind of worked okay on this grid. Which for those of you. Um, this this year the grid is up to 0.9.1 on the plus um, uh, with also the the uh, extra kind of fixes so that's where we are right now and and you know thank you to, to Diva for helping us sort that uh, uh, I'll move it back to you for questions. <laughs> Hey, thanks. We did have a question from Cyber Serenity Vela, and if I've missed any, put them back in the chat again. Her question is, um, is there any work on the network functions? Looks like they are done for standalone. When you run a hypergrid for several servers and routers, it is difficult to upgrade. Any thoughts on that? To upgrade, I'm sorry, to, I missed the part of the question. To upgrade what? Oh, sure. It was. It's a, it's a question about network functions. 
and whether or not mm -hmm. uh, they're part of what we do in the open simulator code or an external something that's um, outside the boundaries of the um, server code. Right, so networking in Open Simulator is a complicated thing, and because uh, it's just a complicated uh, setup, uh, it's it's a mixture between what we can do in the code and what people ha can do in their own router configurations, and it, it, there's a, a lot of a lot of assumptions in our code, and there's a, you know it's 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 a little messy. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think I, we can we can improve a little bit, but I don't think we can ever make it super easy because uh, it's um, networking and s with such a sort of a peer to peer and people working on their own uh, homes and stuff. It's going to always be a little messy. So yeah, yeah, that's the most that I can say. I don't know if Hubert wants to add something. No, it's basically that. Of course, uh, that we are still we still have some problems uh, that we will try to improve, and in the future, for example, for a viewer like uh, we plan to have, maybe we should move to IPv IPv6 mm -hmm. support and uh, things like oh, that. Oh yeah. Because um, for normal viewers, we are, we are stuck with IPv4, and that starts to be a problem also. Okay. Hey, you bet. Neil Bird was fascinated with the ability to add um, functions to the uh, to to, uh, to the uh, to the scripting and asks in the new scripting, is it are functions added through a module? Is that documented yet? And is that on the wiki, or will it be in the near future? Uh, well, documentation, documentation. As someone says, <laughs> the code is the documentation. But uh, I think, uh, but about that, I should say that we have two main uh, um, API models. One that supports uh, standard, uh, let's say, Linux Labs uh, compatible functions, and another that has our own extensions. My it's very easy to create a new API model and add it. To, to, to the system and my recommendation is that if you plan to make your own functions you create your own API so the, uh, that will reduce the, the, the conflicts with our own changes in our own API models uh, okay but you can uh, add a new API model uh, with your own functions and I think that's the best route to do that okay um, in, yeah. the, in the OpenSim sources, there's a module called Extended Physics, uh, which is normally not enabled, but it adds a whole bunch of new and functions for the bullet physics engine. But it's a good example of how to add new functions, how to add new constants to the scripting language. So you can start that as that with a temp as a template. Um, that's something also I can take a look at um, when I've got a little bit more time. Um, some work has been keeping me pretty busy the last most of this last year. Um, but I do seem to remember that uh, you can add some uh, scripting functions um, through the um, uh, sorry through the um, through region modules, and uh, I think there might have been something in the wiki about that, or maybe it was a sample module. I'll have to. Uh, see what I can do to dig up some information and perhaps make it a little bit easier to find it in the wiki. Thank you. Now the next question is really perhaps more of a viewer question, but we'll see what your thoughts are on it. Hiker Philip asks, is there any development taking place on in OpenSim for a browser-based viewer? And Heike, just so you know, I'll, I'll take the first part on that. We do have several sessions that are going to talk about browser-based viewers. Over to you. <laughs> Did anyone want to? So, um, not, I, I can jump in. I, I don't think that from, uh, from our side in the Open Simulator Core Developer, I don't know of anything <clears throat> that is going on uh, related to that. I know. Over the years, there has always been people trying to do that and 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 succeeding to some extent, but there has never been sort of a main uh, browser-based viewer. I, and I've I've talked uh, over the years to hear about uh, some of my skepticism about uh, whether that is a a good idea, but. Um, 
you know, the, the, I think there's there's people who have tried in the past and who are still trying, and I'm sure we will hear more. I mean, so we have something very similar, not to Open Simulator, but uh, um, Adam uh, has been doing Sine Wave, which is a virtual world on the browser, and and it's sort of like Second Life, but um, uh, on the browser. So, but it's not for Open Simulator. Thank you, Krista, and thank you to the core developers for a terrific session. Now, before I uh, introduce the next session, I wanted to remind you that when you're looking at the program, scroll down to where you see the photos of the speakers. You can click on them to see more information about their bios. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 7.30 a.m. in this keynote region and is entitled, What's Good About OpenSim 0.9.1? Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and to the audience. Mm -hmm.